Hello there, a warm welcome to the program. I'm Olayemi Udunuga, and this is Tech Trends. This week, we feature the Lagos Startup Expo as tech enthusiasts and startups showcase innovations and the potential of Nigeria's tech sector. And then I chat with Frank Chuku, Head of Growth and Strategy at Fez Logistics on Nigeria's logistics industry. Don't forget, this is a program that takes you on a ride in 25 minutes to seek out innovation and creativity that are unique to Africa. Millennials and the generations that follow are shaping technology. This generation has grown up with computing in the palm of their hands. They are more socially and globally connected through mobile internet devices than any power generation. And they don't question, they just learn. Innovation, collaboration and growth. These are three key concepts tech enthusiasts and professionals had in mind at the Lagos Startup Expo by TechPoint Africa. The expo provided a platform for startups and budding entrepreneurs to showcase innovation as well as drive the growth and potential of the Nigerian tech ecosystem. Here's the report. A convergence of startups, innovators, tech enthusiasts and investors to foster innovation as well as the growth of Nigeria's tech industry. Okay. Tech events serve as a melting pot of different ideas and a platform for collaboration, which is why TechPoint Africa brings them all together to showcase their solutions and connect. Through critical conversations and insightful workshop sessions, participants are exposed to a wealth of ideas as they learn about the latest industry trends. Nigerians require an alternative solution for cross-border transactions and the challenges that we face in carrying out digital transactions. The first one would be bank limitations for international payments. So I know even at least one person here would have tried to make payments on their phone using their debit card and then will be blocked for some reason, okay? So whether it is the bank limits or the amount that you can't, um, the amount that you can't spend, like some bank cards have like a $100 limit on them. So what if you now want to make purchases worth $101, all right? So these are the challenges that we face regularly. Then purchases, purchase of digital goods and services is almost impossible. Yeah, seemingly easy purchases such as paying for apps on App Store or your subscription become so difficult, right? Because for some reason your bank card stops working. So these are the challenges that we aim to solve. Market participants. Now, the Forex market is a decentralized market and by that we mean it doesn't have like a central office where it's being operated from, it's decentralized. And it's open every day of the week, 24 hours a day. Before you get from 450 to 451, there's going to be 450.01, 450.02. So those units are what we trade in the Forex market and we leverage on that to make a profit. The Expo also served as a means to help burden startups and entrepreneurs take their businesses to the next level. And the chief servant at TechPoint Africa says they fulfilled that objective. It's very important that um, the startups that we provide coverage for, the businesses we provide coverage for, are doing well because when they do well, we have stories to share. And so, one of the struggles, especially for early stage startups, um, is finding customers. You know, you know, finding the market. And so, by bringing tech enthusiasts, potential customers together in one place and gathering all the startups and businesses to in one place. We provide the opportunity to you know, grow that market, engage with your audience, generate leads, also collaborate, because startups can also collaborate with each other. Another, issue, another challenge they have is always um, you know, being able to grow, and sometimes they need partnerships to be able to do this. It was a day of innovation, collaboration and growth, especially for those passionate about the rise of the ecosystem. In the last year or year and a half, there has been a slowdown in global funding. Um, and when I say global funding, I mean private equity and venture capital. 
But what's happened is that there's now a flight to fundamentals. Basically, only the strong survive. So companies who would deliver consistently on the fundamentals, strong unit economics, show strong growth, and show that they can be resilient in the face of cyclicalities, those companies are the companies that will survive in the coming few years because there's a liquidity crunch around the world, not just for in Nigeria, in Africa, and with global investors. So that's what it looks like. And the companies who are going to raise funding going forward have to be more resilient than the ones we've seen before. The Lagos Startup Expo is a demonstration of the impressive progress of the tech sector and how those passionate about its success stay committed to nurturing entrepreneurs, fostering innovation and inspiring creativity. Fabrizio Fidati, who lost his right hand in an accident 25 years ago, had not experienced warmth or cold in his missing limb onto trials for a bionic technology sparked hope that it could one day feel warmth in his prosthetic hand. The 59-year-old Italian is among 27 amputees who took part in trials for a new technology developed by the Ecole Polytechnic Federal de Lausanne. Yes. It allows patients to sense the temperature of objects, from the coolness of running water to the heat of a stove burner in their phantom hands. The two main components are a system which is able to get the temperature information while the prosthesis is grasping, and another system which is able to deliver this information to the residuum by thermally stimulating the residuum. In this way, the patient, we can close the loop, the prosthesis is grasping, the sensors are getting the information, which are then are translated into sensation, which is done at, um, wearable on the stamp of the subject. And the beauty of this is that uh, it's not implanted, it's wearable, and this means that the translation of this technology to the real clinical practice would be extremely fast. A phantom limb refers to the striking sensation that a limb which has undergone removal or amputation continues to exist. One of the very exciting feedback we had uh, was one of the patients who, uh, while we were doing the test that you just saw where we were touching different materials, in between them, uh, the experimenter, actually Francesco, would take the sensor and put it on his own arm. And the patient told us that beyond the experiment itself, it was those moments where he could feel the hand of Francesco and his phantom hand that were the most important. So for us, at this point, we were interested from this functional point of view on materials. But where we want to project this in the future is into this affective sensation. We, f we think that we, we could give people a better sense of embodiment of their hands and maybe even give them the possibility to feel the loved one in a much more natural way. With thermal electrodes placed on the skin of the residual arm, amputees like Fidati have reported feeling hot or cold sensations in their phantom hand and fingers and have been able to differentiate between plastic, glass and copper. Temperature has been extremely elusive to restore because physiologically it's very complicated to restore. So we did something else with touch, with position information, but temperature is really was uh, the next step. And we found two interesting things. First, that in most of the, of the amputees, by providing the information at the residuum, so at the level of the amputation, they feel the temperature, so the, the heating or cooling, happening at the phantom hand. This is really interesting and we, pro we are the first providing strong evidence of this. And second, even more interestingly, from a functional viewpoint, is that you can use this information in real time and the patient can feel that the temperature is changing at the fingers and they can use it functionally with the prosthesis. The technology which has been tested for more than two years does not need to be implanted. It can be worn on the skin and combined with a regular prosthetic hand. The next step for the research team would now be to test the device on a larger scale before combining it with other technologies to improve tactile sensations in amputees. 
So this work resonates in me quite strongly. Uh, I'm, so I'm coming from Afghanistan, uh, where I've been working with, um, I've been seeing actually a lot of people with arm and leg amputation. We actually have the highest rate of amputation in the world. And one of my first contact with, uh, with uh, we even say neuroscience, was the discovery of phantom pain in amputees, uh, which was described, I was six years old, it was described by my aunt, um, who told me that people without hand could feel pain in their missing hand, which was almost like a mystical uh, thing to me. So it has always been in my mind for me to try to solve that problem and try to come up with something that could eventually prevent that sort of pain. So years forward, coming here and then doing my PhD has always been my, one of my dreams to work uh, on, on this phantom sensation. Now the fact that this phantom sensation could be also pleasant, uh, which what the, the patient described, that was beyond all my expectation, I would say. Fibati said the tingling he had in his phantom hand subsided when the device allowed him to feel sensations of warmth and cold and said it could facilitate the lives of amputees when they cook or want to assess the temperature of water when brushing their teeth. A Nigerian artist is using artificial intelligence to reimagine life for African elderly people by showcasing mere real-life pictures and videos of them walking down the fashion ramp and on the beach. Malika Fedwa, who is also a filmmaker, said because many elderly people were marginalized in the society, especially in the fashion world, he began to imagine how they would look if they were models. Afedwa started posting some of his work on social media and it went viral. So I never thought it was going to go this viral. I just thought my friends would like it. My friends and my friends would like it. I normally do. But I never thought it would go this far. However, when I was making it, I kind of knew there was something there. Because while I was, when I was creating it, I was, I was enjoying the images. I was like, wow, this is dope. I'm loving what I'm seeing. He came up with Elder Series a catalog of pictures and videos showing white-haired women and bedded men strutting the runway for a virtual fashion show in Afrocentric attire, including ornamental neck and armbands. So the Elder series came from me trying to showcase the elderly people in a different way that you don't normally see them. You know, because I feel they're marginalized. I feel like people don't talk about them, you know, in the community or anything. So I wanted to see them in a different space. And what inspired that was my personal relationship with my mom as well. So I wanted to see, you know, always, you know, imagine the elderly people in a place that is not um, either in, in a sad space or in a, in, in a, in a, in a, in a suppressed state. Afedwa was not always an artist. He studied business in the university, but stepped into the world of filming after a friend bought him a camera in 2011. Afedwa said the idea to explore a different world for old people came when his elderly mother fell ill. Using an artificial intelligence app, he started creating content showing a brighter side of old age. Nigeria's logistics industry is one of the fastest growing sectors of the economy and is estimated to be over $60 billion in value. E-commerce and technology innovations have been strong drivers of this growth and experts say if harnessed properly together with solutions from Nigerian logistics startups working in the space, the country has the capacity to become a global leader in the logistics value chain. Frank Chuku, Head of Growth and Strategy at Fez Logistics, shares his opinion. What is the value of our logistics industry and how far have we come? Um, it depends on who you ask. Um, there are estimates that put it at about $60 billion. Um, personally, I think it's, it's way more than that. Um, I, I think, and I also think we've come very far from where we were uh, probably 10 years ago. Um, the logistics space has seen massive improvements. No thanks to the pandemic as well. Um, there's been a lot of improvements and investments so far. But yeah, it, it's, it's upward of $60 billion, if you'd ask me. Do you think we have a viral logistics industry to support the growth in e-commerce? 
we are not there yet. Uh, it, it's it, for me, it's still a long way. We are still a long way off. Um, but there has been significant progress. There has been a lot of progress, especially technology-wise. Um, there has been a lot of inroads in technology. Companies who do who have done a lot of stuff in the IoT part of techno of um, logistics. Also trying to make sure that people are connected. People or businesses are more connected to people. Um, so you don't have to be where you are, you don't have to go to the location of where you want to buy something and, and have it delivered to you. So I, I think I think we've, we've had massive improvements. People can buy things and get it the same day. So the delivery timeline, the turnaround time for deliveries is a lot shorter, both for last mile and also mid mile, which is the trucks. But I think there's, there's still a long way for us to go. Um, based from investments, so we still need a lot of investments. The, the assets that we currently use, some are still probably far off from where it should be. The, the, uh, some are dilapidated, so we need more investments into buying assets. So bikes, trucks, um, vans as well. So we still need massive investments. But I think I think we've we've gone we've gone very far um, in, in trying to in trying to at least close up the gap that we currently face in the industry. We've seen a lot of startups trying to disrupt the industry. What difference are they making? Massive, massive, ma massive difference. Um, so technology has helped us a lot in bridging that gap to knowing the if these people can pay uh, and then sort of investing in, in bikes and also phones for the riders and then creating a part of ownership for, for that. That's what startup has done. Um, it should have been more difficult for them before now to get credit to, to purchase the assets. But now it's much easier. There's a lot of startups doing that, and first being one of them. Um, and then technology-wise, there has been so closing the gap of um, trying to the location problem that we have currently in the industry. So, except aside the cities, going into the inner, inner cities or in the rural areas, trying to locate people's addresses, it's difficult sometimes to locate addresses. But then there are some people doing fantastic stuff, trying to close that gap, and, and then making it easier to verify people locate their addresses easily, which was not possible before now. So technology has been able to bridge that gap. There's, there's a lot of startups doing amazing stuff in, in different value chain. Talking about how important technology is to the logistics sector, how important are IoT and 5G solutions? Very, very important. Um, so it, it, because of, if you look at technology, um, Using IoT and then using 5G is very, very important that those two, those two things are in place. And I'll, give you, I'll tell you why. For IoT, it helps you know where, say for instance, you, you placed an order to Channel Studio and you want to know where the rider is without having to call. There's a lot of technology that can help you track. And IoT being one of, that, one of the technology that helps power that um, in the back end to make sure that you're able to know where the rider is and the rider is able to know where you are without even calling you on the phone. So I, I think it's very, very massive. And then for 5G technology, it makes it faster. It makes it easier for people to, to be able to look for items they want to place, look for, should I say, the sellers. It helps them locate the sellers easily. It also helps the backend guys who are doing the technology to be faster, to make to churn out applications much faster than we currently do with 4G and 3G. So I, I think I think with the advent of 5G, it's it's going to be a massive improvement in, in that in that space. And then also for especially for the, the, the buyers and the sellers. It's so it, it's going to one, I know it's going to crash the prices of, of internet, and that means more people can be able to access it, which means more people within that space, more people you needing logistics, more people needing. Uh, commerce from different areas, from different parts of Nigeria. Um, so IoT is very, it's very critical that we keep improving on the, the current technology that we have, and then also trying to make sure that the 5G network as it is now spreads all around Nigeria. That, that is going to massively help drive the growth of um, logistics uh, nationwide in Nigeria. I know you already mentioned one or two challenges that are faced in the industry. But can you tell me about some others and you know the opportunities that exist? So what comes off the top of my head is investment. Um, there, there's still a lot of investment has happened over the last three years from the pandemic. 
into logistics space, but there's still a lot to be done. Um, that's that's one of the big major challenges that the, the industry currently currently faces. And then I would say I would say the, the current government has really tried. Um, they've they've been helpful with investments, but I and I think a lot more can be done on that side. So I know Bank of Industry is doing a lot in in trying to help people who are in the logistics space. Um, but I think I think a lot more needs to be done. There needs to be more investment. There needs to be more. It has to be out there because I speak to a lot of people and they don't even know that there are funds that they can they can access if you want to if you're in the logistics space. So for it to be made known as well, and then also with regulation, I, I know a lot of a lot of work has been done with regulation uh, as regards in the logistics space. But I think a lot more can be done with regulation to make it easier for entrants or people who are already in the industry to be able to at least get in into the industry and then make be able to see what, where their revenue is going. Uh, not um, so. I, I think I think that's one of the challenges that I'm sure work is, is currently going on. But I think more, more can be done. And then um, one other challenge that, like I mentioned, that a lot of companies are trying to using technology to get location of addresses and using IoT as well. But I think numbering addresses, especially outside of outside of the, the cities, uh, going into rural areas, outside of urban, urban cities and going into rural areas, better numbering of houses. So those are kind of the challenges that um, is being faced by um, by the logistics players. But I, I think I think with more investment, with more players getting into the into the industry, that is going to happen. And then I also feel, but I, I think that's something that is going to happen in the, in the near future. I'd like, personally, I'd like to see more measures and acquisitions um, between different logistics players. So not people playing small, but then thinking about it big. So if you're good in one value chain, honing on it, and then probably merge with someone who is excellent in another value chain, and then putting, putting that resources together, it's going to make massive difference um, in that logistics space. So, that those are kind of the challenges that I think that if we're able to solve and hone in on, it's going to be it's going to be great. And what about the opportunities that exist? So op opportunities massively. Um, so opportunities in technology. If people, there's still a lot of room for people to build better technologies um, than what we have currently today. So better technologies. The the engineers that we have, we have lots of tech talents. In Nigeria, so I think I think if they get building, there's a lot of opportunities for them to support build technologies that support logistics, both both in the last mile. So people, the tracking system, the ordering system for for logistics as well, making it easier for riders to locate addresses more, more easily. That means they will deliver more within a short period of time. It means they will be more productive. So there's a lot of opportunity there. And then also if you, people who can provide assets, so financial houses can, can come in in that aspect and then provide assets for companies and then also for individuals, for, for the drivers themselves, which creates, should I say, part out of poverty, roots out of poverty for them. That means they get to pay more taxes, there's more money for them to play with, they get to pay more taxes to government, government has a lot more money, a lot, a, much wider tax net to play with so it all around like the, the ecosystem is kind of interconnected in, in in such a way um I, I think there's massive 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 opportunities in, in that in that space well it was great having you on the program frank thank you so much for joining us on tech trends it's my pleasure Laimi. thank you very much And that's our show this week. If you missed any part of it, you can always catch up on the Channels TV YouTube account where we have all of our episodes. And I encourage you to watch, share, and like your favorite editions. As always, Tech Trends is here to share insights, trends, and developments happening in the tech space. For Tech Trends, I'm Olayemi Udunuga. Bye for now. <music>